My father saved my life. He told me never to forget who I am, where I come from. But in this place, nobody even wants to know my name. Getting attached is deadly. Because when darkness comes, I might be gone. Iris tore society apart, but I won't let it turn me into an animal. Staying alive became the essence of our existence, yet life must be more than just survival. Every day the disease tries to crush us and make us forget who we are, but I keep fighting. My name is Aiden, and I am infected. Um, so, there's so many questions. Like, I asked Twitter, I was like, hey guys, what do you guys want to know? <laughs> and I just got bombarded. And uh, I just want to let you guys know right out of the gate, there's a lot of stuff that is going to be surprise. Okay? Yeah. It's a lot of stuff that we can't touch on, but I want, one of my favorite things in the game is uh, the weapon system, the weapon crafting and stuff. Uh, is there, like, I, I'm sure there's going to be, that's going to be in the game, but can you tell us if there's going to be, like, some new stuff? Or? Well, there will be a lot of new weapons okay. in the game. Uh, for sure, the weapon crafting will be a bit reworked because we okay. changed the combat uh, in Dying Light 2 into uh, the way it's more tactical, the way it's more uh, giving you more satisfaction in certain bits, certain moments. So the weapon crafting fills the gap, and it creates a lot of emergent uh, situations that create the satisfaction moments. Uh, yeah, it, it will be more complicated and more complex, So. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Very cool, very cool. Um, one of the things that I really like about, or I like about video games in general, is the difficulty. In the beginning, when I first started the first game, it was just run, 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 run. Is that? Can you speak to like the the gameplay arc uh, with this? Because it seems like he might start out like a badass. But am I wrong about that? Um, I can't tell you too yeah. much about that. <laughs> okay. The thing is that Aiden Coldwell is. Uh, entering the city at the beginning of the game, almost at the beginning of the game, so okay. he's not from the very beginning in the city, and he's not infected from the very beginning. So it mm. it probably covers some of the answers. <laughs> okay, okay. I, it, I, like I said, totally fine if you yeah. can't say stuff, but I have to ask these questions. Yeah. The hard-hitting, journalistic questions. Uh, co-op, question mark? There will be co-op, so okay. you can play entire campaign, entire story from the beginning, till the very end with your friends. It's up to four player co-op like in the first game. Some of the new elements will be uh, introduced very soon about the co-op and about the multiplayer elements of the game, but right now it's confirmation that the co-op is there. <laughs> Uh, can, I, can I ask a couple questions about, uh, you know, when you dropped a lot of the information around this sort of the, the city that is living and based off of your decisions, then, you know, the, is it the peacekeepers, the, yeah. right, like they, uh, they could react differently to you or what is happening or saving a citizen, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, I'm curious if you can talk at all about how this new character Aiden now and what arguably has to be an interesting thing within this world to be infected and keeping that a secret, et cetera. Um, is that also going to be playing into like some of the decisions and how people or, or different organizations might be reacting to me in the game? Yeah, it plays a, it plays a pretty big role. The, uh, one of the big pushes with Dying Light 2 was to sort of like really focus on choice and consequences. And like, you know, working on like RPG games in the past, it's really easy to do that with like human interaction. Right, right. But what's really impressed me about Dying Light 2 is the sheer amount of environmental reactivity that may occur as a result of your actions in the game. And really, the, when I saw the first few examples of it, I'm like, Adrian, you gotta be, you gotta be freaking kidding me. He's like, no, wait, watch this. <laughs> it's really empowering for a player. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that 
That is exciting overall too because it means that when Zeke plays and I play and we start talking about it, it's like, well, no, 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 wait a second. That didn't happen. It's like, well, I made these decisions. And uh, to me as a player, that is also interesting because I tend to be a, a, like a, you know, a good player on the side of like maybe chaotic good, but more good. And when, when, it's, when you get put up with those even more difficult decisions and you don't know what effect that will have, like on the ripples on the world, that's, that's super exciting. To yeah. yeah, one of the, one of the big goals is actually how the players sort of like discuss their experiences and how, how their gameplay has been different in each playthrough and then share it online and talk with each other and share their experiences. That was also a big part of it. Yeah. And when you talk, like you actually mentioned uh, each playthrough, can you talk about like the replayability factor? Yeah, you can finish the game without seeing 50% uh, of the content even. So really? when you play a game... Speedrunners, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> That's a challenge. <laughs> So the cool thing is like when you're playing again, you know the consequences based on your previous choices. Mm -hmm. So now you can turn left and right and play differently and okay. the world will look different. So it's a, it's a super exciting uh, motivation for playing this game again, especially if these, this is the action game. And a lot of choices um, have the tremendous influence into the game world. So the scale of the consequences is super high. Sometimes it's really like, like from movies, like disaster movies with, yeah. uh, with oh. 2012 oh. or something like that. Like oh. apocalyptic, apocalyptic, apocalyptic like choices. I like the sound so of this. So if you play it differently, you're going to see different things. So it's uh, it's it's very much connected with uh, Dying Light. Uh, will, we, will we as players know the weight as we're making some of these decisions or... Yeah, actually, the way the uh, the choices are framed, it's you know, it's always fair to the player to let them know what the stakes are. Um, but then sometimes, you, I guess, yeah, you know, know? it kind of helps. But then, like, we dump a crap load of pressure on the player at the moment when they make the decision. So you know what the stakes are. You've got limited time to decide, and there are pluses and minuses to each one. But we we want players to be able to make those different sure. decisions, and then also be able to, like see the results of those in the game world. Awesome. Yeah, the, but the thing is that we were working a lot on those choices to make sure that we. We won't lose the um, the DNA of Dying Light One, and it's for sure the the, the action game. So this thinking aspect, what to pick, the A or B or C or D, it's not like in strategical game where you really need to think a lot to mm -hmm. think. Oh, should I go left or should I go right? So it's much more like the action. So there's uh, the, the the time is there, like it, it limits you, but it's like you feel that you need to go A or B, and uh, there's no point to go B for for, for the player. So it's not like you know, the, the, the yeah, strateg strategical choice, yeah. So we mostly focus on consequence rather than choice, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I'm super happy to hear you say that because I've played a lot of, like, adventure games, action games, or whatever with a story, and it's always so frustrating when choices don't matter, you know? And I'm glad to hear you say, like, Shit will change if you make like these choices. Yeah. I love that. Dying I'm, I'm, Light 2, shit will change. <laughs> there you go. You're welcome. Great night. Pay me now. Pay me now. Check something out. Okay, go. Uh, all right, so uh, another really, really uh, exciting aspect of the uh, playing the first one was the parkour. Can you tell us like any innovations, updates, that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, we doubled the move of the parkour moves, so that's that's the one thing. So it's much more fluid when you just exploring through the city. Uh, we introduced last year the. Well, I'm sorry. When you say double the move, what do you mean by that? Like the, the speed uh, animations or the... Oh, okay. uh, when you interact with uh, with environment. Okay. And we uh, introduced last year something called the parkour puzzles. So there are certain puzzles, you know, mm -hmm. where you really need to look at your stamina. And measure it, find the road, find uh, find uh, the place that you want to rest. I love that. And there's the, 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 a lot of those kind of things. And uh, in the demo we've created uh, for for the show, uh, we also introduced something like uh, improving your avatar. So it's not only about skills that you can unlock for um, having new moves in, or be more uh, efficient in uh, in moving. Mm -hmm. You also have some tools. Yeah. So you are upgrading your avatar. You have your tools on your body. You have a, a new grappling hook, which is really great. You can. <laughs> that was one of the questions. <laughs> like, ask him about the grappling hook. <laughs> yeah, it's not just for moving through the city. It could That's be used awesome. in a combat in any any different cases. Yeah. Now.